Again, we are all welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to appreciate our Father in the faith, the Chancellor, Bishop David Oedipo, for the privilege given to me this morning to bring us the word of life. I appreciate and acknowledge the presence of the Vice Chancellor, Professor Abiodun H. Adebayo, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Acting Registrar, members of management, our highly esteemed professors, faculty and staff, our postgraduate students, and the kings and queens in Hebron. If you are shouting, you can shout better. Your shout is unto the Lord. Amen. Now, quickly, we are looking at unveiling the biblical laws of success. Thank you, Jesus. Unveiling the biblical laws of success. And I'd like to begin by saying to us this morning, everyone that is born of the Spirit of God is born to command breakthroughs in life. Everyone born of the Spirit. The emphasis is on born of the Spirit. If you are born of the Spirit, you are ordained to command breakthroughs in life. John chapter 3, beginning from verse 5, all through to verse 8. John chapter 3 and verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. That means to be born of the Spirit means to be born again. And verse 8, as the wind bloweth, we are it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whither it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Everyone born of the Spirit, you can't hold him down. Everyone born of the Spirit cannot be restrained, cannot be contained. He that is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. But to command breakthroughs, we must engage the laws of the Spirit. It is not enough to be born of the Spirit. You must engage the laws of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and verse 2. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and verse 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are, in the, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. If you are born of the Spirit, then engage the laws of the Spirit to command a breakthrough that is ordained of God for you. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, it said, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. This book of the law of the Spirit shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do. You are not only to read. You are not only to study. You are not only to meditate. Observe to do. Then you shall make your way prosperous. And then you shall have good success. I pray for someone here. This semester shall be your best semester yet. Alpha semester, glorious. But Omega semester shall be more glorious. Because God never gives his best as the former. The best of God is always in the latter. Which of you have seen the house in his former glory? Is it anything compared to it now? For the glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. God is said to do something new. But you must take responsibility to work with God. Two cannot work together except they agree. If you check all the testimonies that were, the testimonies that were, uh, the testifiers that testified this morning, you can't 
deny the element of God in all the testimonies. The one read, you can't take away the, the presence of God. It is wisdom to identify what is working and align with it. Understand that spiritual laws are higher and more potent than all natural laws. Natural laws, scientific laws, they are all subject to spiritual laws. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9, the Bible says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Yes, the Lord, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And one of the critical laws of the Spirit that guarantees success is the law of right company. Say with me, right company. Right company, right association. We are made or mad by our associations. We are either made or we are mad by our associations. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And who is a fool? A fool is not somebody... It's not just somebody who, who, is not, who doesn't have sense or who is not making sense or who doesn't have wisdom. A fool is a man who does not recognize the authority and sovereignty of God. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. Intellectual, intellectualism does not equal to divine wisdom. He that walketh with vain persons shall have many poverty. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 19. He that walketh with vain persons. People who have no regard. Proverbs. People who have no regard for God. He that walketh with vain persons shall have many poverty. Poverty of the mind. Poverty of the spirit. Poverty of the soul. You'll be poor. Anyone that does not reckon with God is a fool. And working with such a person endangers your life. It puts your life at risk. Beware of those who entice you, those who lure you, and encourage you to do wrong things. Beware of them. You look at the example of Judas and the Pharisees. Matthew chapter 26, you read from verse 14 to 16. Matthew 26, verse 14 to 16. And one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went out unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will you give me? I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. Wrong company, wrong association. He covenanted with them. And that was what led to his destruction. You look at the next chapter, Matthew 27, verse 3 to 5. After he betrayed Jesus, he saw that what he did was wrong. But there was no way he could go back. In the name of Jesus, any company that is out to destroy your future, may God severe you from them. Amen. No matter how close you are to those friends or folks today, in the name of Jesus, I declare an eternal separation. Amen. Listen to me. Your future cannot be better than the association you keep today. It has been said that in five years' time, you are the same person that you are, except for two things, the books you read and the company you keep, the friends that you keep. In Psalm chapter 1, beginning from verse 1 to verse 3, Psalm chapter 1, beginning from verse 1 to verse 3, blessed is that man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Your spirituality is your number one choice for friendship. Anyone that doesn't have interest in God is not qualified to be your friend. Not. He that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this law does he meditate day and night. This man 
It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. Whatsoever he doeth. Circumstances may be speaking otherwise, but whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. Friendship is not by force. It is by choice. Friendship is not by force. It is by choice. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I put before you, I call heaven and earth to bear witness against you. I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. The choice is in your hand. Choose. 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 Choose your friends. Every man's destiny is at the mercy of his choice. Choose your friends. Some of you sitting here today, you need to change your friends this semester. You need to change your circle of friends. Those who are not adding value to you, who are leading you in error, leading you in disobedience, you need to pull away from them, disconnect. It is not by force. Two cannot work together except they agree. It is foolishness to join a vehicle with somebody who is not going in your direction. You never arrive in your, at, the, your, at your destination. There's no need. There's no point. Even Jesus chose his inner circle. Jesus chose his friends. Jesus the Messiah. He understood the importance of association. He had to pray all night. Luke chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. He prayed all night just to choose 12 people. But here you are, everybody is your friend. Mary, my friend. Esther, my friend. Dorcas, my friend. Jennifer, my friend. Cecilia, my friend. Priscilla, my friend. Felicia, all the share, 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 share. They're all your friends. One of the reasons why people get into wrong company is low self-worth and self-esteem. You are looking for people who will encourage you, who will tell you that don't worry, don't mind what every other person thinks about you. We, we understand your value. You may look different to them. Don't worry. We are also different from them. That is why we are together. Understand that every child of God is royalty. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your opinion, contrary to what God has said, holds no water. He doesn't hold any value before me, no. I have the mind of Christ. I may not have attained the ultimate yet, but I am a material undergoing a process. I am still in process. So getting into a wrong company, because they are the ones who accept you the way you are, it is wrong. It begin, you see, the crisis started with you not having a sense of value for who you are by redemption. Jesus prayed all night to choose his friends. He had the company of 70, had the company of 12, had the company of 3. Even when Jesus had resurrected and the apostles were to choose the one to replace Judah, they had to pray. Lord, you know the heart of all men. When they were to separate Paul and Barnabas for the assignment, they had to pray. Listen to me. No matter how great a person's destiny is, your association can wreck it in a sweep. I once met a young lady, one of the uh, nations I was privileged to be in, and then we went out for evangelism, and then I saw her, and I was concerned because she was quite young, and she was not in school at that time of the day. And I said, come, why are you not in school? What's happening? You shouldn't be here by now. And she said, oh, you see, yes, I'm supposed to be in school, but... I'm not in school because my brother is responsible for my schooling and uh, he, he cannot be responsible anymore. I said, what do you mean by he cannot be responsible anymore? Did you do anything to offend him? What is he? What happened? And then she told me that, you see, so my brother drives Okada and he had this group of friends that they, he always goes to their place every evening. They, 
the while you wait time together, as you put it, and all of that. Now, one of those days, he finished from work, returned in the evening, and then he went visiting his friends. And while he was with them, the police came in and cleared out everybody. Unknown to him that his friends were actually armed robbers. They had gone somewhere to rob, and they had killed someone. And he didn't know. And so the police got information of where their, their hideout was, and they came in there, evaded the place, and they cleared everybody that they saw. Now, the friends who he went to see didn't tell the police that this man is not part of us. And so he had been in prison for over three years. And there, and I think also in Nigeria, murder is a capital offense. It's a state uh, issue. So there is no way you can maneuver your way out of it. Now, the destiny of the sister, as it were, that was tied to his own, was suffering devastation as a result of his own error. Not only is the sister suffering, he is a forgotten issue because there is no hope except God intervenes. Mind the company you keep. You are there, he's smoking and puffing it in your nose. And you say, I don't like what you're doing. No. I don't like what you're doing. No. It's just that you're my friend. I don't like what you're doing. No. And then he does it on Monday. I don't like what you're doing. Tuesday, I don't like what you're doing. Wednesday, I don't like what you're doing. No. Don't be touching me like that. Too. I don't like it. Too. I don't like it. Too. Ah! You deaf. In fact, the way you respond, the devil will get out of him. For what? Be wise. Say, I will be wise. Say, Lord, I will be wise. It takes iron to sharpen iron. Proverbs 27, number 17. Iron sharpened iron. It takes iron to sharpen iron. Be wise. Be wise. Working in the company of course, course people will bring a man under a course. You can ask those who entered the ship with Jonah. Now, quickly, let's look at dangers of wrong association. Just go through this very quickly. Dangers of wrong association. Number one, wrong association corrupts character. It corrupts character. Your association molds your character. Your association forms. Your association influences your character. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, do not be deceived. Evil communication, corrupt good manners. He said, my son, when sinners entice you, consent not. You came from a Christian home, and yet the friends that you have here, there are people with questionable character. You know it yourself. He said, consent not. Don't give in to their enticements. Otherwise, your character will be corrupted. And let me tell you this. <laughs> Those who corrupt you today will not defend you tomorrow. I had this friend in school. He was, we, we were having this conversation, and he shared an experience that he had with me. Now, as at that time, uh, his uncle was, I think, the head of human resource for Globacom or so. And then they had this friend. The uncle was sharing with him how that they, they had an enlistment interview. And someone walked into the, uh, before the panel. And it happened to be his uncle's bosom friend while they were in school. Now, in the heart of his friend, this job, I have it already. Ah, I met you here. Considering the kind of relationship they had while they were in school. And after they finished... He came into the uncle's office. The uncle gave him a large sum of money for transport. For him, that is just the beginning of better things to come. And then when he left, the uncle called this, my friend, and said, you see this man? He can never walk in this place. Never. Ah. He said, brother, but you didn't talk to him like there was anything. Did he offend you before? He said, no, he didn't offend me. But in those days when we were in school, there is nobody's signature that he cannot forge. Nobody. 
Nobody. He says, so I won't open my eyes and engage him here. He is going to put me into trouble. So I will not. Now, imagine if he was even the best candidate. He has lost it on the ground of character. I will not. He cannot work here. It is better I just be giving him transport. Anytime he comes, I give him transport. Let him go. But I won't engage him here. Number two, wrong association destroys destiny. For Samuel chapter 13, verse 3, all the way to verse 32, it tells us of the story. Second Samuel, sorry. Second Samuel chapter 13, it tells us of the story of the son of David, the sons of David. Now let's begin from verse 1. Please follow carefully the scripture. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 1, it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a first sister whose name was Tamar, and Abnon, the son of David, loved her. Now this is a brother who had inordinate affection for the sister. Verse 2, And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Verse 3, But Amnon had a friend. Say with me, a friend. Amen. Say it louder, say a friend. Amen. May God separate you from friends like Jonadab. Amen. Whose name was Jonadab? The son of Shemaiah. David's brother. So he was even more than a friend. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. Deceptive. And he said unto him, Why art thou, why art thou being the king's son, lean from day to day? Will thou not tell me? And Abnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Verse 5 to the end, you can read that on your own. He gave him an advice. That advice was what led to his sleeping with his sister and his eventual destruction. Absalom heard of it, gave him time for his offense to mature. And after the offense matured, he sent the soldiers to go and slay him. Now, the same Jonadab who advised Abnon was the same one who went to report the matter to David to say, David... Don't let your heart be troubled. It is the one who doesn't have sense. It's the one that they have killed. Every other person is safe. So don't worry about him. Life continues. Let's move on to the next victim. His destiny was terminated prematurely by wrong company. Your own destiny will not be terminated. But hear me, the choice is yours to make. The choice is yours to make. Number three, danger of wrong association. It is a breeding ground for many troubles. You can't walk with the disobedient and escape trouble. Jonah chapter 1, you read from verse 1 to 15. I referenced that earlier. Many troubles. But for someone here this semester, the wisdom and the grace required to rightfully choose your association, God will give to you. Amen. That somebody wants to be your friend does not equal you being the person's friend. I like you. Can you be my friend? No, we cannot be friends. Yes. I shared with them on Tuesday, somebody met me and said, Pastor, you see, I saw your friend, Pastor so and so, at so and so place. I said, no, he's not my friend. He said, no, you can't say that. I said, he's not my friend. You can call him, you can tell him, you can say anything, he's not my friend. We are not friends. We are not going in the same direction. We don't believe the same things. We are not operating by the same principles. We cannot be friends. No. Friendship is not by force, it is by choice. As we round up, let us look at benefits or importance of right company. Number one, supernatural advancements. Supernatural advancements. Genesis chapter 13, verse 15 and 16, tells us the story of Lot. Lot which went with Abraham also. 
Genesis chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. Lot which went with Abraham also had flocks and hearts and tents. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great. The goodness of God on the life of Abraham rubbed off on him. You know what Laban said to Isaac, uh, to Jacob? He said, I have learned from experience that God has blessed me because of you. So there are people that you associate with that blessings trail you by reason of your company with them. Some of us today, we are privileged of God to be where we are, to touch some of the things we have touched, taste some of the things we have tasted because we have accompanied with God's servants. Bishop Oedeko, that is just the truth. So the, the grace of God that is on him, that is flowing from his head through his beard to his skirt, that is the same one that we are partaking of. You want to see advancement? Check your circle of friends. Those who are not adding value to your life, they don't deserve to be your friend. And there's no sympathy about it. There's no, uh, how will she now be feeling? She won't like it too. She may be depressed. For what? <laughs> Depression is free for somebody who wants it. Now, hear me, let me say this to you. Don't be a misfit for somebody else, yourself. We are talking about you choosing your friends, right? You also don't be one who destroys other people's life. Right association is a great plus to destiny. May you be a right association to somebody else. Yeah. And there is room for change in case you are not. Now, except you are deceiving yourself, you know if you are adding value to your circle of friends or not. You know it yourself. You know. There is no deception about it, except you are deceiving yourself. You know it yourself. What value are you adding? And for those of us that are in parasitic relationship, you better run away from it. Your friends are parasites. Spiritual parasites, financial parasites, academic parasites, everything. They just, they keep sapping and draining and draining and draining. And you, you are going lean and lean and lean and lean. You better run for your life. Let me tell you this. <laughs> you see, when you get oranges and you squeeze the juice out of the orange, whatever you have left is of no value. What do you do to it? When they drain and they drain and there is no more virtue to drain, they will change friendship. You better be wise. Number two importance or benefits of right company. Better outputs and results. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 to 12. You have better outputs, you have better results. Ecclesiastes 9, verse, chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Two are better than one. They have a good reward for their labor. Number three, destiny recovery and preservation. Destiny recovery and preservation. Lord camped with Abraham. When Abraham heard that Lot had been captured, he went after them for the rescue of the destiny of Lot. He went after his captors. Friends who stand in the gap for you in prayers. Friends who encourage you. Friends who motivate you. Friends who fire you up. Not the ones who drain your fire. Look at this testimony. This morning I want to thank God first and foremost for his faithfulness in my life. He has kept and preserved me throughout my stay in this school so far. I especially want to thank God for coming through for me in my academics. Not only did he bless me with like-minded, studious friends who helped me in revision. Like-minded, studious friends who helped me. Not the ones who destroyed me, the ones who discouraged me. Peter would have been destroyed, but for the company that he kept. His company would not allow him to go. They prayed until God sent an angel into the camp of the wicked. Until God sent his angel to rescue Peter. His company stood in the gap to pray. He that walks with the wise is wise. He that hangs out with fools will watch his life fall into pieces. May that not be you. 
The conclusion of the matter is this. You have the choice to make. Choose your friends today to secure your tomorrow. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands to heaven and give God thanks. Go ahead, give him thanks, give him praise. If the word of the Lord has come true to you at all, give him thanks and give him praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed.